Hi, Sandy here. Um, I just redid my library and I'm so excited I can finally see all of my books. Um, I'm going to give you a tour of all of my books I've collected over the years. Um, this is my family room. Um, we've been in our house for 18 years. Um, for the first seven years we had a one car attached garage and then um, 11 years ago we had we got we tore that down and then we had this addition built the car the garage is two cars wide and two D two cars deep so it's 20 by 40 and then this is the upstairs of, over the garage and right there is our staircase that this used to be a window right there <laughs> and now it leads into our family room um, so um, when I designed this I had the idea I, wa I wanted shelves all the way around my new office f to hold all of my books and then I had the idea to have instead build a hallway on each side of the library and um, then I could line those with with shelves because I collect a lot of things um, so I'm going to show you quickly my family room this is the office I didn't turn the light on I didn't clean house or anything this this is the family room we collect Mickey Mouse and then over here I have an old table I like to craft at the table. We eat snacks at the table, sometimes lunch. I collect, um, I collect a lot of stuff. <laughs> I designed this room to hold a lot of stuff that had been packed away. Um, I used to work at a soda fountain years ago, so I collect soda fountain stuff and Coca-Cola stuff, Pepsi stuff. So anyway, and I collect, um, M&M stuff. This is my daughter's side of the library. Um, her uh, children's books that we've collected over the years, a lot of chapter books. And then this side is, um, I collect Avon. I have like 600 pieces of Avon. And our movie collection, um, this is, I didn't turn the light on because that's not what the tour is about really. And then this is our office. My brother lives with me, that's his spot. There's my cat. Uh, my daughter's away at college, but that's her spot. Uh, this is my spot. And this is my husband's spot. So on to the library. Now, my collections. I have like a thousand cats. Cat figurines. And this was completely full of cats. And yesterday I packed up three boxes of cats. And I still have some cats out. Um, and I moved my books over to this side. Most of them. Um, my books were all in this section here. And the, the books you see right there are books that I have not read yet. All of the books on this side I have read. Um, so here's some of my cat collection. So I didn't pack it all away. Um, and I've got a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, and I'm a scrapbooker. And I've been scrapbooking for 20 years. And these are my scrapbooks that I have made. Vacations, um, genealogy, other family members, just all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to start the tour of my library got my little stool here I'm going to stand on for my top shelves. Um, I love Irma Bombeck and up to here these are all Irma Bombeck and then Taylor Caldwell there's a lot more of her books but I've read all of these which are Taylor by Taylor Caldwell uh, I think she was writing them like in the 50s and 60s and 70s. They're old. Um, and then Richard Castle on TV. <laughs> Castle. I have five, six of his books. Five, five of his books. Um, that's a series. Um, Agatha Christie. 
it took me like 30 years to find all of these books. Now I used to buy a lot of books at at thrift shops and that's where I got most of them but then it got down to like I needed like eight more or ten whatever ten or twelve more to finish my collection and I went to Amazon for, that's the first time I ordered from Amazon and you can find almost anything and I finished up my collection by getting them there and then I've got Anne of Green Gables the whole series I love that um, and then um, so there's the um, Agatha Christie's and um, when I had my books on the other side my shelves were so full that I had to stack them like this and then more like this and the entire shelves I had were, were stacked like that all the way across um, so, but now and I have them um, by series and I wrote the you can barely see but I wrote the, the author and the titles on there but now I really like seeing them like this so this is Agatha Christie I have almost two full shelves of Agatha Christie there's like 90 of them and everything on this side that I'm showing you now I have read already over like 35 years time um, and then there's Mary Higgins Clark um, all of these are Mary Higgins Clark and con continuing down to here more Mary Higgins Clark and then at this point um, she did some Christmas I got five Christmas books with that she wrote with her daughter Carol Higgins Clark and then her daughter Carol Higgins Clark from here on she wrote a series about um, a lady detective um, who solves crimes and uh, there's decked, snagged, iced, twanged they all end in ED um, she wrote all of those and, and then I started reading uh, James Patterson only like seven, six or seven years ago and that man <laughs> I've got a long way to go to catch up with him um, I've got close to a hundred books that I've already read this is all his Alex Cross series right here and I'm up to number 26 26 of those um, there, there's he's got another one out but I always wait for the I like the the um, these are mass market paperbacks um, a lot of people when you say mass market they don't know what you're, talking, what you're talking about but they've been around forever and then they've got the paperback which are these larger books and they're about the size of a regular paper book and I prefer not to have those because they don't line up nice on my shelf and they take up more space and with all my books I need a lot of space uh, uh, Alex Cross is, is a black man who lives in New York. He's a detective. He's widowed. He's got two kids and then he had another boy with another with a woman and then he got married. So he's got three kids and and married. And then there's um there's my cat. I don't know what he's up to. <laughs> um Women's Murder Club. I'm up to number 18. There's a 19 and 20 out, but they're not in paper, mass market paperback yet. Um, that is about Lindsay Boxer. She's a woman detective in San Francisco. She's married with a little baby girl. And then there's, um, I only have three so far. There's only like one or two more. Um, Harriet Blue series. Never, never 50 50 liar, liar. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, she's a woman detective in Australia, and she's crazy, <laughs> but I love her. And then there's Triple Homicide. Um, I wish I hadn't bought that because it's just um, little, like, mini books of the same books that I've already read. There's three different um, stories in there, and there are mini books of these already, these books I already have. And then there's um, the Private Series. Jack 
Morgan. <coughs> he owns a expensive detective agency for the very rich people and he's got locations in LA, Vegas, um, uh, Australia, Moscow, all over the world. And he solves cases. He's single. And then there's um, NYPD Red and that's a special force in New York that solves crimes of the rich and famous. And then there's Michael Bennett. He's also in New York. Um, he's widowed with ten children that they've adopted. <laughs> um, and I wish they'd say more about his children, but they don't. But he's a family man. He's one of my favorites. And then, moving across here, these are some of James Patterson's um, standalone books. You know, they're not part of a series. And I've read all of those. And then I have <coughs> on the other side more James Patterson. And these are the books I'm working on reading and I've mixed some uh, Nancy Drew and uh, Hardy Boys in there because I'm trying to read those. I never read those when I was a kid. So, uh, and I still have to buy like 25 or 30 more. Uh, he's written a lot of books, that James Patterson. Okay, so, turn it around again. Back up on my step stool. <laughs> um, V.C. Andrews. Uh, there's the Flowers in the Attic series. And then the Heaven series. And then, um, My Sweet Audrina was a standalone. And there's more series. Um, and I read them, oh man, like 30 years ago. And... I kind of lost interest in those, so I never read them again. And then um, a friend of mine recommended the Cat Who series, series by Lillian Jackson Braun. Um, everyone was the Cat Who. Um, and I read that entire series. And there are um, like 29 of them. And then there's a cookbook and the short stories and other things so I've got that and then Janet Ivanovich now she is my favorite because she is funny it's about Stephanie Plum who is a is a um, bell bondsman <laughs> and she's she's just inept really but she gets the job done <laughs> and it's funny these are funny books um, they made a movie of one for the money and it's pretty good but the books are really good and we're up to number 25 of of Stephanie Plum and then um there's another character um Diesel and Diesel there's a Plum series where Diesel visits um Stephanie Plum and he's kind of like magical and then he's got his own series with another woman, the Wicked series. And then there's more. And she wrote a lot of love stories. And I've got all of those. And I've read all of these. And then um, she's got this series with criminal, Curious Minds and Dangerous Minds. And then she's got this series with um, a de woman detective who... <laughs> is fixed up with a criminal who is very good and and they they solve crimes together and they they're kind of very attracted to each other <laughs> and then of course Stephen King um I kind of started my reading adventure well I read as a kid a lot and then as a grown-up I didn't read much and then I bought um Stephen King's um Pet Cemetery it's right here and I loved it <laughs> that got me hooked on Stephen King so I've collected all of his books over the years I better slow down so you can see them so I have two full shelves of Stephen King now before I move to this side of the aisle 
I had all of these stacked on one shelf, two stacks. And, as, and I'm happy I get to see my spines of my books. And then down here is overflow of Stephen King, more Stephen King. <coughs> and he wrote two books there with um, Peter Straub, The Talisman and Black House. And then I have two books by Peter Straub. And I just keep them right there with his other books with Stephen King. And then Stephen King's wife wrote, wrote three books and I have those. And then I read Dean Koontz, and he's got his own shelves. But this is my overflow of Dean Koontz and Stephen King here. And um, he wrote the, this series about um, Jane Hawk and Forever Odd. Oh, I love Forever Odd. He's an odd guy that sees ghosts and solves crimes. And he's got a book about um, his dog, his golden retriever that he had. And then down there is those standalone James Patterson's book I showed you. Okay, time to move up to the top again. I, I'm not a very good filmer. <laughs> uh, things are kind of wonky here sometimes. Um, top shelf here. My daughter was assigned to read this book, Ashes, by Laura, Lori Halsey Anderson. And she hates to read, so I read her books with her. And it's pretty good. It's about a slave girl and her sister. And um, their mother died, and they were supposed to be freed. And they got sold instead. And, and how it's, it's a bit graphic about how horribly they were treated. And she ends up escaping, and she, she has met this guy, um, who, this other slave, who's kind of free uh, escaped and he he goes to Valley, Valley Forge and fights for George Washington do I have these in the right order? no, the, well Chains was the first one and then Forge anyway and then Ashes about how they finally get their freedom more or less but th that was a very good series. Um, it's for young people, but it's good reading. Then I've got The Handmaid's Tale, and I watched, watched that series on TV. Um, it's pretty political. It can be. People think, oh, the government's trying to run your life and stop you from having abortions, and because it's about in the future, futuristic, where they've taken over and they they make these women have babies for them. Uh, but no, I don't think of it as political. And then I've got, um, these are Judy Bloom's adult books, not dirty books, but for for grown-ups. And I have the whole collection of Judy Bloom on my daughter's side for the kids. And I've read Audrey Rose and For the Love of Audrey Rose. These are old. And then I've read Graham Masterson. He's kind of like Stephen King, not nearly as well known. And then John Saul, I have a collection of his books. And then these are, are just some miscellaneous books that I've read that are not necessarily part of a series or anything. This is the biggest book I've ever read. And it was really good. And The Ladies of the Club by Heaven, Helen Hoven Santmeyer. Uh, I read this whole thing. And it's, oh, it's huge. It's like 1,400 pages. But it kept my interest. It's pretty good. And I like some true stories like Patty Hearst, um, um, the Mommy Dearest, um, Jim Jones, Coal Miner's Daughter, I've got Marley and Me, Helter Skelter, The Burning Bed, just Ripley's Believe It or Not, just interesting things to read. And then here's my Dean Koontz collection. Um, you saw his Odd Thomas series and the Jane Hawk series. He also did a um, Frankenstein series, which is not the Frankenstein that you know. It's different. And then um, all of these, these are mostly pretty much standalone books. I don't think he did any other series. So I've got two full shelves of those plus the overflow of those two other series. And then Nancy Drew, 
Um, I did not read Nancy Drew when I was a kid, and I've, I collected a bunch of them for my daughter, and she showed no interest. So I've been reading them, and I've been ordering... I'm still working on the first 58. There was 58 in the original hardbound series. Um, I need to buy about 10 more. And these are the ones that I've read. I've got a lot more to read. These are two books by with Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys together. And then these are the Hardy Boys. And I like Nancy Drew better. And I'm not going to collect all of the Hardy Boys. I'm just going to read what I already have. Um, I do have this entire shelf. <laughs> um to read of Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys and, and almost all of these these are some more Hardy Boys and all the rest are Nancy Drew and some with them together but <coughs> excuse me um, yeah I got a lot of Nancy Drew to read and then down here is Gothic Romance um, I'll sh get more into that later these are what I have not read I always like to keep a lot and then as I read them, I move them to the other side. Okay, so... On to the next shelf. Mm -hmm. um, these are hardbound books. Um, most of these I got from um, my dad's cous cousin. And these are like from the 40s. Here's Becky du Daphne du Maurier, Rebecca. Uh, these are very old books, and he was in a book club way back when, <laughs> and and I've read all of them. Um, I think this one, this one was my aunt's, yes, and she signed it in 1891. That's my dad's aunt, so that's kind of special to me. And then I have read a lot of gothic romance. Um, these are from the 50, 60s and 70s mostly. And I have a lot of them. Um, <coughs> I don't really care for like Harlequin romance books. But I do like gothic romance because there's a mystery involved. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to stand back. <coughs> So this is all gothic romance that I've read in the last 35 years. Um, gothic romance, um, I've got like Dor Dorothy Eden, Dorothy Daniels, Catherine Cookson, um, Phyllis Whitney, and lots of, lots, lots of different authors. And um, they're usually like this, they usually have a beautiful woman in lingerie. Or a, or a Victorian dress, um, like running away from a, a Victorian house or a mansion or, you know, <laughs> remember these covers? Um, so, and they're good books. So that's my gothic romance and that's my whole collection. And down here, these two bottom shelves, I have some growing room. There's still some cats down there. Uh, so that's my book collection, and I'm kind of excited. I get to see all of my spines again, and um, I have some growing room. So thanks for watching. Bye.